Hey guys, it's me, John, from Let's Talk. I'm here with Frank from Frank's Media and Reviews, and we're here with our third episode of Collector's Corner. And Frank, what are we talking about here today, man? Um, we are talking about physical media. We're talking about... Oh, this looks like a damn earthquake. <laughs> uh, you guys get those in Oregon? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oregon? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, and then uh, our top five favorite uh, 80s horror movies on 4K... Uh, but yeah, we're just here to chat because it's, it's been a long time since we actually talked to each other. Yeah, I know. We haven't done one of our joint shows. We did the first two episodes, like you were saying, really close together. And then, we, yeah. you know, it's been about a month or so. I thought it was only a month, but I guess time just goes that fast. <laughs> yeah. And we're using StreamYards. Uh, we're not sponsored, but they're a lot better than than stream laughs. <laughs> oh, my God. It's <laughs> night and day, guys. Let me just tell you. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, man. So how's it going? Ah, it's going pretty good, you know. Been busy, of course. Uh, how about you? Um, well, uh, prior to this, uh, <laughs> prior to this video, it was uh, mayhem um, over at my house. Uh, but besides that, uh, it was pretty. It's been very good. Uh, no complaints. So, yeah. Yeah, I saw you're uh, past 600 subscribers now, and uh, your first video with uh, you, you know, your own show. Uh, the physical media, the collector's chat. I'm sorry, what's the name? Why don't you do it? It's your chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks, buddy. Uh, yeah, so I just completed uh, and posted uh, my first episode of the Physical Media Club. Uh, my first interview is with, uh, was what was with uh, Cody Leach. And then um, my second one is with you. And by the time this uh, is posted, uh, it might have, it might air. I don't know. I don't. I don't know when you're planning to post this, but uh, yeah, you are guest number two. Ah, oh, that's awesome, and I'm honored to be following Cody like that. I love the first show, man. I thought it was a great interview. You're a great oh. interviewer. I can tell you from experience, guys. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was I was hella nervous, man, uh, in the beginning, but I think I, I just kind of warmed up to it and got more comfortable. But yeah, in the beginning, I was I was kind of like stuttering, Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it happens was, to the yeah. best of us, and especially when you're interviewing a guy like Cody, you know, like that's a that's a big guy in the YouTube space, especially you being the horror junkie that you are. Like he's a horror guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I, I was shocked, and he was great uh, pre and post uh, video, and and so yeah, it was just a great first experience, and um, I've been very fortunate to have. Um, uh, Three more. So after you, I have three more guests lined up, and my goal is to do one guest every month. I'm trying to do, uh, as I mentioned in the first video, I'm trying to connect with people within the physical media community, the horror community, and if I can, the film uh, community because they're big physical media collectors too. But um, they generally don't talk about it, but they have in the background like a ton of movies that they have, and so. Um, yeah, Cody was my first, and um, I think in in a couple months uh, I'm gonna connect, uh, try to anyway, connect with more um, film people, and, and you know we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, everyone's been pretty welcoming, um, and again, I'm I'm so new. Uh, uh, I've been doing this now for four months, um, and just trying to kind of. I don't know, dive into different avenues of of YouTube and not just solely with, um, you know, reviews, but just talking to people that I've always wanted to talk to um, and that I've watched for a very long time. And I'm very fortunate that the first batch of guests that I have is are, are people that are kind of well known within those uh, the physical media and the horror uh, genre um, communities. So I'm I'm friggin' excited, man. So yeah, and our interview we actually just did uh, last week, I believe, and that went I thought very well. So can't wait for you guys to watch it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it again. Well, you know, seeing it back because I thought it, it felt great. So I can't wait to actually finally check it out for myself. So I, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I definitely thought it was great. And I appreciate you. You know, again, it was an honor to be on the show, especially <laughs> following Cody like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it, it's been fun, man. It's been really fun. Just, uh, again, connecting with people uh, that I've always admired and uh, getting to know them on, on some 
personal level, right? Because I, I, I want to get to know them besides uh, not only just their collection and what they have, but the individual and their journey on YouTube. So yeah, it's been great. Yeah, and it's great. And you know, there's egotistical maniacs out there who want to talk about themselves like the like I do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But you know, today we're like Frank said, we're here to talk about our favorite 80s horror films on 4K Blu-ray. And you know, Frank's the horror guy, but I love the 80s more than I think anyone on this planet, even though I never experienced a year of my life in the 1980s. But 80s movies are just the best and uh 80s horror of course i love that but frank uh what do you feel about 80s horror man um well i was born in 83 and so from what i can remember um my uh, as i mentioned in my previous videos my my first movie was nightmare in elm street and the and the entity um those are the earliest films that i can remember as a kid and uh they were they were scary, man. I was about to cuss, but yeah, they were, they were hella scary. And, uh, but you know, I just had, um, great memories, um, watching them. Yeah. It's odd to say, but I had a fun time, uh, watching those movies and watching it with my dad because when I was young, we just watched, um, uh, horror movies. Uh, he liked Westerns. I didn't really care for Western movies, but he, he loved Western, um, horror, um, typical action movies and martial arts. And so that was kind of like my childhood, <laughs> but the eighties were just fantastic. I, I love everything about the eighties. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely the most popular, um, genre for the horror, uh, you know, for the horror genre that, that decade right there. It, I mean, it was kind of like the Mecca. There was so many hits, um, within each year. Um, and the great thing was that, at least in my opinion, is that uh, the 80s, you could tell people, uh, directors were really exploring what to kind of do within the horror genre. Um, so, uh, and then also there was practical effects, you know, that, that, and that transitions really well within the 4K format. Um, and yeah, I, I just simply love it. I, I literally, and then growing up, um to kind of where i'm at now i've kind of dived into um some of the other um not not typical um horror movies um that made you know that kind of made the the genre very popular like um you know the blob lost boys stuff like that um so like i i discovered some other some movies that you know i'm going to mention on my top list um that aren't kind of in the in the popular um opinion i would say hopefully maybe not i don't know we'll see uh but john yeah uh, what about you man i know i know you you love the 80s that's your favorite uh decade your your whole thing is your uh, design is all 80s <laughs> 80s pop <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the thing about the 80s man i just love the i love the colors i don't know what it is it's something that draws my eye but it's those big neon colors and the big hair, all that stuff about the 1980s, and then the movies themselves. And the music, the music. I mean, it's over, everything's over the top, and it just you know it's flamboyant, and mm -hmm. I, I love it. I just absolutely do. The music, like you just said, is fan some of my favorite music came from the 1980s. You know, power ballads, the hair metal. I, I loved all that stuff, and then the movies themselves, like you know, they're very fast paced, especially the action genre. And then the practical effects, like you were saying, that like that's just something that we've lost so much nowadays that you look back and you can go, yeah, but you can see that they're fake. But ah, it just never bothered me. I love that. I appreciate. I mean, the Terminator is my favorite film. It has one of the worst effects ever in that movie, where it's so obvious that it's an effect, but mm -hmm. it never takes you out of it. At least, I mean, it never took me out of it. It might have mm -hmm. took other people out of it, but you know, that's almost an '80s horror movie, and it you know it doesn't have in a 4K Blu-ray yet. Yeah, that just actually reminds me with, um, I just did a review for, um, I was debating whether to put this on my list. I should have, but I didn't. So I'm just going to talk about it. But it's <laughs> the basket case. I just did a review for it. And that that has become one of my favorite films I have seen. Um, and, you know, I can understand why there was a cult status for that movie. Uh, but yeah, the, the practical effects were just, they were bad 
but they were good in the sense of they did phenomenal work for the budget that they had, which was $35,000. And it, it looked phenomenal, but it was, it was, it was bad, man. <laughs> it yeah. was bad. But that's one of the things that I really love about the eighties is that they, um, you know, you, you got your serious, um, horror movies you had, and then you also have movies that they kind of knew what they were and they, and they just went for it. And that's one of the things that I love, um, especially, um, going into broaden my, uh, horror knowledge, I guess I would say, is that there's so many great movies that um, they know what they are and they just go for it, whether it's, you know, super cheesy or over the top. Um, and a lot of the 80 movies, uh, they they just do that. And that's what I love. Yeah, that's exactly what I love, too, man, is how they just go for it and they commit to it. Like, um, mm -hmm. I just rewatched The Monster Squad. I did a review of that on my channel. I don't know. Have you uh, you seem like somebody who'd like The Monster Squad? Yeah, um, I I liked I watched it when I was a kid, um, but I didn't honestly remember too much of it. And then I saw it, of course, when uh, Kino released it. And, you know, you mentioned it not too long ago. And I actually just made a comment on one of your videos. Uh, check out that review. Um, yeah. But it was it was uh, I almost I almost cried, man. I was kind of kind of tearing up a little bit at the end uh, with Frankenstein and the little <laughs> girl. And since I'm a, I'm a, you know, a girl dad. Uh, that moment hit me a little bit more, which I wasn't expecting. Um, so yeah, it, you know, things kind of affect you a little differently when you become a parent and that one did, which I, again, wasn't expecting, but it was a good movie. Yeah. No, I, and I think... it's scary too. There's some parts that like, yeah. uh, like the, the wolf man, uh, yeah. that oh, I was like, dang, man, that was, that's a kid's movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. But, you know, the way they talk to each other, I always feel like, okay, that they got that right. You know, like that feels exactly like when you're that age, not many movies can figure that exactly out. They always have them talking too serious, like, they, like they're adults. But these were kids that talk like kids. So I appreciate movies like that. Yeah. Yeah. The dialogue seemed pretty authentic for that age group. Um, yeah. So that's that's a good thing to point out because it's true. Um, yeah. yeah, see the movie, guys. <laughs> see the Again, movie. Th that didn't make my top five. I'm guessing it didn't make yours either. So, <laughs> no, no, it, it, it didn't. Uh, but that's, uh, I do have to say, since we're talking about horror, because I can just talk about the genre forever. Um, one of the things that I loved about the 80s, uh, again, because I was born in 83, is that um, from what I can remember, um, was how accessible it was for the youth around that time. Uh, the reason why I say that is because, you know, the movie that I just stated uh, that I could remember was uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, The Entity. However, what really got me into the genre weren't those scary movies. It was uh, cartoons. It was uh, Return of the Killer Tomatoes. It was um, Beetlejuice. Um, there was Ghostbusters. I mean, there was there was uh, good horror um, and, I, and I know I'm forgetting some and because, you know, most people think of like Scooby-Doo, uh, which is true for some people. But for me, I grew up around the time when um, it was just weird um, cartoon movies or cartoon shows for kids. And they made it very um, enjoyable uh, for, for young kids. And I, I loved the humor. I loved how it looked and and of course for me it hit, hit me a little bit personal um just because i watched some of those movies with my dad like the return of the killer tomatoes there was a movie and then i made it a cartoon and you know i kind of remember that um and and so uh yeah that's what that's one thing i loved about the 80s um that's um uh, that it kind of just went away um as time went on yeah, you know, that's one thing that's we're just very nostalgic for now, but it's very mm -hmm. it's completely gone. But yeah, out of all those, I watched those cartoons too, even though I'm a little bit younger than you. Uh, Beetlejuice was a big one for me actually growing up, and they uh would cross over with some shows, which was really fun. I always appreciated that, but yeah, you mentioned Scooby Doo, I really liked Scooby Scooby Doo growing up, and that was kind of a I wouldn't say like an introduction to horror. I would say that you brought it up at the beginning, which is a movie, unfortunately, that can't make for both of our lists because it doesn't exist on 4K Blu-ray, which is a nightmare on Elm Street. You know, 
that really was my big introduction to horror and it happens to be you know in the 1980s <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah it was just good times and to be honest with you i know we're sticking with the 80s but so super quick like early 90s had some great shows are you afraid of the dark ghost mm-hmm. writer ghost writer i used to watch in in elementary school uh you know little stuff like that so it was very you know like as you mentioned uh, nostalgic and uh, it just made um, it accessible for the younger um, age group to kind of go into horror because uh, it was not, I mean, there was also books uh, as well. I mean, it's yeah. scary stories to tell in the dark. Goosebump. Uh, Goosebump. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. fantastic times growing up in the uh, 80s, uh, early 90s. So. Yeah, we I, definitely were spoiled with riches with uh, that. I, I forgot, you know, how Are You Afraid of the Dark and Goosebumps, which is funny because Ryan Gosling right now, that's where he got his start was in both of those shows and the Mickey Mouse Club. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was he in Goosebumps? He was in both. Are You Afraid of the Dark and Goosebumps because... What? Both were, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, both shows used to film in Canada. Actually, that's why they kind of look similar. And he's from Canada. Oh, yeah. I knew, I, I knew he's Canadian. And I knew uh, he got his little start from... The Mickey Mouse Club, because there's always that video of him dancing. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, yeah, I didn't know that he was in Goosebumps as well. Yeah, yeah it's so. crazy. And you know, he's he's record. His face never really changes. It just gets more and more facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much, man. Pretty much. Um, so yeah, did you? Um, yeah, is there anything else you want to talk about the the eighties and and you know the the horror genre and uh, before we kind of go in our little list and then talk about just whatever in the physical media world? Well, yeah. Well, one thing I wanted to bring up, you know, since we're talking about the four K Blu rays of the nineteen eighties, one thing about nineteen eighties was uh, you know blockbuster Hollywood video, mm-hmm. and you used to go there and look at the VHSs, and I felt like the horror section always had the best box art, especially for VHSs, and. You know, it's cool to see that carrying over now into 4K Blu-rays, but that's something that back then that could sell you on a movie. And I felt like horror really took the box art seriously, whereas other genres, you know, they all kind of felt like the same. Whereas when I think of the best box art, it always seems to pop up like Hellraiser always sticks out in my head is like one of the greatest VHS boxes of all time. You know, Mm -hmm. all the Nightmare on Elm Street's Friday the 13th, you know, there's so many of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the ones that I remember is, is uh, Ghoulies. I don't know ah, if you've ever seen that one. Yeah, the, the little guy coming out of the dang toilet. <laughs> oh, my God. I thought it was pronounced ghouls, and it's funny <laughs> until someone else said it. It's actually ghoulies. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and just, I, I mean, I just remember, like, uh, Toxic Avenger. I mean, yeah. I love uh, the Toxic just, Avenger. <laughs> just so many great, um, yeah, memories walking in. Um into Blockbuster or to your local. Um, I remember going to, um, what is it? Uh, uh, Albertsons or one of, one of the like local stores in our area. And yeah, I mean, just, it would just be right in the corner in the back, um, a bunch of movies that you could, you could just pick out. And it, those are just fun times to, to go in into. And I'm pretty sure you had those mom and pop um, uh, video stores as well. Um, oh yeah, we uh, yeah. had Video City. It was called around us, and uh, we used to, we actually me and Matt we uh, were friends with the owner, and he would give us uh, the posters when he took them down off the wall. So oh, that's awesome! For a long time as a kid, I had Bad Boys Two and Bad <laughs> Santa on my wall for like ever, and Freddy versus Jason. <laughs> okay, Bad Santa too. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, the first Bad Santa. Okay. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was a great time, man. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I yeah, I just I just love it, man. I I just love the genre. I love that decade, that time uh, period um, as well. So yeah, uh, so I, I'm ready to to go into it. Um, it was it was very tough, and I'm not gonna lie. I have a sixth one here because I'm still debating up there. <laughs> you haven't decided where you're gonna pull the trigger. So you want to yeah, work man. your way up from the bottom up. <laughs> um. Well, um, sure. I, I think I don't see. I, I don't know if I'm doing like an actual technical, technically top five, or you uh, just want to say like these are the best we could. Yeah, uh, I I'm gonna frame it. These are my favorite '80s movies. Like these are the ones that I just simply enjoy 
watching every single time. Hi, doggy. Yeah, um, yeah, and, <laughs> and, yeah. And, and so I, I, and to be honest with you, I try to pick ones that mainly weren't super popular. Um, so just to, cause I know, uh, you know, you're going to mention some, but I just want to kind of, you know, for people who watch this video, one, thank you guys. Uh, two is um, maybe to have you guys see some movies that maybe you haven't heard of um, or just talk about about the release or the transfer uh, as well. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. Um, I guess I'll go first. And I'm going to start right up. To I'm just going to grab one right here. It's sitting at the top of the pile. That's Halloween three, man. I, you know, it's one of my favorites, especially from the 1980s. And it's, you know, I've been afraid to say it, but I'll, I'll say it again. Halloween three is the best in the franchise. <laughs> oh. I know. Directed by Tommy Lee Wallace, who, you know, is in the original Halloween or he's an editor. The guy always works with John Carpenter. It still feels like a John Carpenter movie. And I know that in the franchise, it wasn't supposed to be. Michael Myers, and that let a lot of people down. But if you could just look at it and take yourself out of the fact that it's in the Halloween franchise and watch it for an 80s horror movie, I really think it's one of the best. And this 4K transfer is beautiful. The screen factory and the you know the, the case itself. I love these cases that they did for Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't want to interrupt you, man. Uh, but holy smokes, man. Okay, well, first of all, just real quick is... Um, it's actually pretty high on my list. I I, I, I think I'm going to be one of those YouTuber guys, but I'll do a ranking of the Halloween franchise once Halloween gets a little bit closer. Uh, but I will say that it's pretty high on my list uh, because I think it has the best ending in the entire franchise. I think it's one of the, it's the, the cinematography the the, there's a, so many memorable scenes in that movie. Um, but yeah, if you if you take it for what the film actually is, uh, it's very very good, um, and and so I, I agree. I don't think it's the best in the franchise. I still think that's the original. I think that to me is is a masterpiece. That's ten out of ten. However, Halloween three is right up there. It's pretty like I said, it's pretty high on my tier list, uh, ranking list for for that franchise. So that's a good pick, man. I like that. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, the original one is probably still the best in the franchise. It's hard to deny its significance in the world of horror. You know, we wouldn't have slashers without Halloween, in my opinion. Like, yes, it's not the first, but without Halloween, it doesn't take that next step into the 1980s. But my heart tells me Halloween 3, man, you know? <laughs> Dude, yeah. And, um, you know, you, you just mentioned it, is, is that um, what I loved more than anything, because I actually didn't see that movie until late because of numerous people saying that the movie was garbage and it was it shouldn't be part of the franchise. And I, I, I didn't watch it until not too long ago, actually. I think maybe right before the 4K. So, you know, just a few years ago. Um, and that that movie became one of my favorites, um, without a doubt. It was just so good. Um, the reason why I like it so much is because, in a way, like how dark that movie really is, um, and the evil evil ass plan that the guy has um, uh, about what he does. For the people who who haven't seen it, um, you know, I don't want to spoil like the plot too much. Um, but it's 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 such a great storyline, and Tom Tom Atkins is the man. <laughs> he's oh my the, god! He, he's in so many great uh, 80, 80s horror movies. Um, it's it's just it, his acting, and especially towards the end of the movie, um, it's like one of those what the hell moments. Um, and just yeah, I just love the the vibes, the feel of Halloween three. Um, yeah, it's it's a must watch, an annual watch for me, without yeah. a doubt. Hundred percent. Don't and, go here without it. <laughs> yeah, and to go what you just said, uh, you know about the um, the case. It's a it's a the 4K release by Scream Factory is one of the one of the best uh, oh. by far with the, with the hard case with the um, Dolby Vision. The the Dolby Atmos was with the first five films. Um, I I really would wonder why they couldn't do it 
with the 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 next ones um you know six through um eight i believe yeah six through eight um so i i, I don't know why but yeah all of those because i i just like you i i picked those up well i, I think you did uh, but i picked those up day one um and they are one of my favorites in my collection uh by by far yeah so yeah i have them all pretty much i you know, on H2O, though, I, I have the Paramount Steelbook, actually. I, and I think that might have something to do why, the you know, those last three, uh, six, seven, and eight got stuck together. I, I don't know why. Maybe something with their rights. But they still haven't come out solo, if I'm correct, like the original five did. So mm -hmm. you can only still get them with that, that terrible outing case. Uh, that I, I, I removed it, man. It, I, I, I never throw really anything away. Uh, but I, I hated that cover. And so that's part of the reason why I got the Michael Myers house uh, display. Uh, Which is amazing. It, yeah, it just makes a great piece, but it, it just flows really well because they're all of them, one through eight, have the hard case. Um, so, yeah, it just it just looks re really good. Uh, but, yeah, um, Halloween 3, like I said, very good pick. Um, my first one is going to be very, I would I would say, very popular. Um, it is my favorite zombie film, and mm. that is Return of the Living Dead. Oh, well, Frank, oh, man, oh. I knew you were a great guy. I knew you were a great guy, man. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I, I, I love this damn film, and that's one of the things that uh, we mentioned earlier um, is, is that the, the 80s films, uh, they just go all in for the the goofiness the 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 cheesiness the what you know just whatever the hell it is and this has great music um the uh the practical effects look really good the storyline is goofy but i love it the kind of over the top scenes that they have um and it's just a perfect 80s movie and like i said this is by far my favorite zombie film so this is a must own and the 4k transfer looks really good um for from scream factory as well uh yeah i actually uh, echo pretty much everything you said because that is also my favorite zombie film of all time not the biggest zombie guy believe it or not there's that and like dawn of the dead i absolutely love but that's really it but return of living dead i love it i love the music in the movie i love how over the top ridiculous it is i love the effects they're just they're so they're just so good and they're so and then these zombies are you know they they kind of you feel a little bit bad for them they they're in pain mm -hmm. <laughs> which is funny is like you know it's a little bit of a different twist and then obvious I, and they're manipulative you know send more cops yeah <laughs> and exactly i was gonna say is that i want to say this is the first zombie film that they actually spoke maybe uh, yeah you yeah might be right I'm, I'm not 100 percent on that at all so i, I believe you yeah good <laughs> yeah, i know if i didn't believe yeah. you would <laughs> yeah um it, yeah it was just um yeah they they had some some type of intelligence level um yeah to, to get those cops and, and just people in general and yeah i i just i just love it man i just love how punk rock 80s oh, everything about it oh my goodness Did so you many memorable hang scenes out? Yeah, oh my god. Did you ever want to hang out in the cemetery? <laughs> <laughs> I was actually thinking that with uh you know there there's uh, a couple um memorable uh scenes in the cemetery. Um mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but yeah, I I was thinking about that too. It's just yeah, so many good scenes. Oh my god. Love oh, yeah, it. That's a great one. Well, I already got two off the board, so why don't you go again since you only got one? <laughs> yeah, well, if there if there's another one, go ahead and, and mention it, I guess. Um, we can do six, I guess. Um, yeah, because... we can get we could fill the tenth spot with something. I'm sure I, there's plenty on the list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh well, because we're we're doing just five, right? Five what... each, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, maybe not six. Um, but yeah, yeah well, uh, we gotta fill the spot. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, so um my I don't I don't know if this is going to be um, a hot take, but uh, I'm going with The Burning. The Burning is, um, to me, um, one of the best slasher films of all time. I think it's better than um, uh, 
Friday the 13th, the original. I think it's better than a lot of uh, the Friday the 13th films. Um, and uh, yeah, because this, I want to say, came out a year after um, Friday the, the 13th. Um, yeah, because I think Friday the 13th came out in 1980. This was 81. But I just really loved how um, they kind of um, told the story of like what happened to the villain um, and just the, there's so many dang memorable uh, death scenes. There's some good kill scenes. Um, and this 4K transfer is out of this world, man. I love this 4K transfer from Scream Factory. Um, it's, it's definitely probably top, at least for me, top five of their 4K transfers. Um, yeah. Cause yeah, it, it, I don't know if you've seen this film or have it, uh, but I, I always say, get this film because uh, it's it's a must and the story like i said the burning is to me m way better than friday the 13th uh movies um yeah i would say like 90 percent of them in my opinion so this is high highly recommend i actually agree that it's better than a lot of the friday the 13th films i've only seen the movie once and that was last year for the first time didn't watch it on that 4k though i just watched it on streaming first to make sure i liked it and I'm going to buy it in this year's Shocktober sale, mainly because of people like you who say how good that transfer is. It is so good. The daytime scenes look very good. The, the nighttime, dude, I'm telling you, man, I was shocked uh, because uh, generally um, Scream Factory actually, actually has some good 4K transfers. But for some reason, I don't know, this one, the, the detail... And, um, and just the quality looked very, very good. I was shocked. It looked yeah, good. that's a surprise, especially for a 1981 film that I'm sure didn't have a pretty big budget for them to actually get a good transfer like that out of it. It is impressive. And that movie also um, might have been the debut of a bunch of actors like Holly Hunter and Jason Alexander, right? Oh, yeah. Jason Alexander is hella hilarious, dude. He's so funny. Yeah, um, because I actually didn't see this movie. Sometimes... Um, I just, if I know a movie uh, is going to come out in 4K that I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to buy, then I'll just wait. And that's what I did with this one. Uh, and holy cow. Yeah, uh, what you just said, uh, uh, featuring early film appearances, uh, Fisher Stevens, who's some short circuit, Jason Alexander, Holly Hunter. I mean, they're, they're, Holly Hunter isn't in it too, too much, but like Jason Alexander, there's some funny scenes with him in it. He's, he's hilarious. And he's still got his hair there, which is always appreciated. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, okay. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, you're next. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to grab this one right here because I made a mistake. Uh, this was, uh, I was meant to grab the first one, but I grabbed. The second one, so this one came out in 1990, but imagine that this is the first Child's Play movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Although I think that the second Child's Play movie is a better movie and a better 4K Blu-ray uh, Blu in general, but the original Child's Play is still a great film. One of my favorite films, uh, horror films of the 1980s. Also has a Christmas feel to it, you know, even though it's not mm -hmm. quite, it still feels like the coldness of Chicago where the two and three were filmed on sound stages. This was like filmed in the area. And I just feel like, you know, when you watch that now on 4k, it actually looks beautiful. And the film itself, you know, like I said, I think two's better. I think Bride of Chucky's still better, but the original one is still great. And you actually get to see Brad Dourif in the beginning of this one. You know, I you actually see his physical body. And I actually love the opening scene to this movie too. Yeah, uh, and it has Dolby Atmos uh, in yes. that as well. So there's some there's some great scenes. The beginning of that film, uh, some great uh, electric uh, uh, immersive sounds uh, in the beginning of the film. Uh, Brian, you think Brad and Chucky is is better than the than the original? I do. I actually think oh. Brad and Chucky. I mean, I like Child's Play two more than Child's Play one, but I think I Brad agree. Chucky I agree. I still think Bride of Chucky is better than them both. I think Bride of Chucky is a fantastic film, mainly because um, that that movie introduced me to Rob Zombie, and I really like his music. 
<laughs> he he's a very good artist. I, I do have to say that. Uh, a director, I don't like really like him as a director, but his no, music, me neither. His music is very good. Definitely. Yeah. Um, White and Broadway and... Chucky's very meta horror for the 1990s too. I mean, yeah, around Scream and everything. Obviously, they took the idea from them, but. I appreciate it in the child's play world. I think that kind of works for the uh, overall sense of humor. And like, cause child's play three, I felt like, I don't know how you feel about it, but I felt like that was a big step down from two. I don't know, to be honest with you. I, I kind of go back of thinking it's, it's a, it's a good, it's a good movie and it's mediocre. I, I, I'm in between like, um, like when I, rewatched all of them um i i definitely agree that child's play 2 is better than the original um but i i actually wasn't too disappointed i think when i initially saw child's play 3 i was kind of disappointed uh just maybe because of the storyline uh, what they chose to go with but i had a very good time i still enjoyed the film um and Chucky is is freaking hilarious. That's one thing that I really liked about the first one, and, and we have this in common with Terminator and Alien, is that the first ones seem to be uh, more of the horror aspect. Um, and and you you touched upon it earlier, is that uh, Chucky? It it is kind of like a, a Christmas movie because it takes place in Christmas. There's there's some you know Christmas stuff, but um yeah i just love like how freaking evil (laughs) chucky is and you know he does have some um there's some comedy aspect a little bit but he he is mostly like a scary ass doll and especially at the end of that movie holy cow he's terrifying i remember as a kid watching that shoot oh, man oh my god yeah. at first that like lets the mom know that he's real like when she's about to throw him in the fireplace that is scary when he finally shows her like you know imagine the terror in her mind oh man that gets me and then of course he goes on fire <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and not gonna lie even that damn scene when he kills the damn teacher <laughs> i was like oh, what? I, I know <laughs> as a kid i was like oh my god <laughs> Like maybe Chucky's gonna come to my school and kill my teacher. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So uh, yeah, that, that was a good, good, good pick. Um, the original. Um, I I will also go with. You know what? I'm gonna go with this one. Um, I am going to go with the first demons. Oh, okay. I have not seen this one. Yeah, I I am kind of big now in the uh, Jalo uh, uh, films. I I love it, man. And this movie is fantastic with just that cheesiness um, that Jalo uh, kind of brings, but also. Uh, this is pretty scary, um, and uh, yeah, this is a fantastic um, transfer from Arrow Video. Um, I yeah, just a pretty cool little um, you know slides out, and you know uh, yeah, this is the first film, but it, it's such a great release. There's even like a, a dang um, movie ticket uh, for the film right here oh, um awesome. uh, uh synops uh, did their own 4k release of uh, both films uh, i i prefer this one um but i i just love the genre i'm i'm going to make a video here soon because i just went uh for kind of being honest i went a little crazy with getting some giallo films um but this was one of the ones that I just loved. I love this damn film. There's so many great, uh, memorable uh, kill scenes. There's this cheesy. Again, if you watch Giallo, there, there's like you know, there's some, there's some cheesiness to it. And this one just goes all in it. Um, yeah, and it's just perfect. It's a perfect '80s 
demonish uh, movie because you, you get some humor, uh, but you get some really messed up, really messed up scenes, and the practical effects is just phenomenal. And this is uh, uh, it's uh, uh, it's presented by uh, Dario uh, Argento, um, and um, what's what's this guy's name? Uh, Lamberto uh, Bavia. Um, he did uh, a blade in the dark um, ah, okay. as, as well, uh, which I actually just got and um, should be arriving here in a few days. Um, uh, the limited edition um, from Vinegar Syndrome, uh, and man, I I just love it. I I love uh, Giallo. I just oh my goodness. Uh, highly recommend though. Uh, it's on Shutter uh, for people who don't have um, who haven't seen it and they want to see. Uh, like Frank, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, mm-hmm. See this movie; it, it's on Shutter, and it, it's one of the best '80s um, movies to see. So, Demons. That's awesome. A, I, I haven't seen it, but I'm really glad you're getting it in the Jalo because that's something I've been wanting to actually do for a while. Our buddy, the original Fuzz, he's a huge Argento guy, huge Jalo guy. So, I, yeah, I, I talked I to him. He's gonna be happy that you picked that and put that on the list. I'm sure. Oh, dude, I, yeah, because uh, I just recently saw, um, again, because I just went a little crazy with uh, Giallo, um, I I got uh, uh, Dario Argento's uh, Four Flies on Grey Velvet, and we had to, you know, talk about that, uh, Fuzz and I. So, yeah, I, I, I just love it, and I can't wait to make the video, because I, I got it. I got a lot now. <laughs> well, I, I can't wait to see that video and see your thoughts on them because I, I'm, I'm a little mixed on them. But to be fair, I haven't really like gone like a full rabbit hole in like a long time. And maybe now I'll appreciate them a little bit more because a lot of problems I have with Jala films is like in the plot. Like sometimes they get a little bit like uh, you, you have a little trouble following them. Like what's going on? And then uh, but the visuals and the audio are always just some of the best, especially Suspiria. Yeah, exactly. Uh, mm. Suspiria, um, that was like the gateway for me. It was Suspiria and, um, um, gosh, what's another one? I can't remember. Uh, but Sus- Suspiria was, was my first one, uh, at least that I can remember. Uh, and I, I really liked the visuals. I li- and the 4K transfer just simply looked amazing from Synops. Um, but, yeah, I, I just I just love the genre. And I, I could, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's very good. And there, I, I think, okay, just super quick, just super quick. That uh, is, is I think for some people, uh, why it's maybe not their favorite, uh, which is totally understandable because they, they are, some of them are just weird movies and they don't make any fucking sense is, is for me, what it is, is, is the, the, Part of the reason why I like it is is because of that weird storyline that doesn't make any sense, and you just go with you just go with it. Um, and the visual effects. Um, what always gets me when I first started watching it, it was the dialogue and the audio because they don't really match up. There is that slight delay, um, and so that always threw me off. Um, and so um, even with like the newer uh, Giallo um, films. Uh, it's it's still the same thing where like that there's that audio delay um, very slight but it's I I think you just kind of get used to it um, after a while yeah once you first notice it you can't unsee it but then your body and like your mind always just adjust to anything it's just human nature and then you just kind of go you kind of just get on the rhythm with it pretty much yeah that that's exactly yeah oh I just love the genre I just yeah. love it man. I, I got to do that one of these days, go down that rabbit hole because, yeah, especially I appreciate cinematography. I definitely think I'll appreciate these, I think, nowadays more than I used to. Yeah, I, I will tell you, I, I will, um, once you get, if you do get into it, I'll, I'll tell you some of my favorites. Uh, you know, like one of them uh, is very good, uh, uh, is um, Blood and Black Lace um, by uh, Maria uh, Bravia. And I think, I want to say that's her name. Hopefully I'm right, uh, but I, I just recently got that 4K for, and, and it's from Arrow uh, Video, and that is literally one of the best 4Ks I have ever seen. Oh my god, uh, really? It, it, uh, it is, it it is up there. It's definitely one of the best visuals 
uh, 4K transfers. To me, it's it's up there with Suspiria. Um, it looked so good, and the and the colors from the '60s really pop, and the movie is very good. Oh my goodness, man! And that is yeah, that, that's a must must watch. Well, I'm gonna put that on my 4K list of movies I need to get on a narrow sale then, because that's one I definitely want to check out. To, yeah, it was only released in the UK, um, so uh, so yeah, you'll have to go to like Diabolic or uh, you know one of those other places. Uh, but there wasn't a US release, uh, FYI. Ah, well, good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, great choice, by the way, buddy. I appreciate that. And so the next one I'm gonna pick is I'm gonna go. Um, you know, we'll go with this one first. We'll save the mainstream one for the end. Uh, from Beyond, which is directed by Stuart Gordon from oh. the 1980s. Oh, you got it. <laughs> no, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. That's <laughs> that's hilarious. I on C then. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So I should have known you'd know this movie and appreciate it. So same guy who directed Reanimator, which I do like Reanimator more, but it doesn't have a 4K release. But I really love From Beyond and the 4K transfer with all the pink and the purple. I mean, my God. It looks glorious, incredible. And this movie, a lot like Reanimator, when I first saw those VHSs, like Terminator, they stuck out in my mind for looking really bad. So seeing them on 4K is incredible. Yeah. It, oh, my goodness. And there's just some great uh, actors, you know, uh, uh, Rob, uh, and they're just famous within the horror genre. Uh, Barbara uh, Crampton, of course, Jeffrey mm -hmm. Combs, Ken Forey. Uh, I mean, he is just yeah, the, those three are just iconic within the horror genre. Um, and it's just a fantastic, crazy ass film. Uh, you know, it's the HP Lovecraft weird ass film. Um, and it's visually stunning. Um, Vinegar Syndrome always knocks it out of the park with their 4K transfers. Um, and you have the same as me, which is this beautiful uh, oh, yeah. slip cover. Uh, I mean, it's just they nailed this release with it because the the colors on the slipcover are exactly what's in the movie. Very vibrant, eye catching. Just and look at this! Look at this damn! Look at that man! It's like a messed up ass creature. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, I know. All the H.P. Lovecraft could ever envision, and then Stuart Gordon was one of the only people who could kind of bring that vision to the big screen too. It, it is it is a must it is a must watch movie and uh if you love of course um uh, reanimator you know and uh gosh there's there's another movie that i'm somehow forgetting that he directed is it uh, dolls dolls thank you thank, <laughs> thank you so much yeah because that's part of the um uh, arrow empire of um empire screams um Enter the video store or enter the video store Empire Screams, I believe, uh, box set. And yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. One of my favorite box sets from last year. I got, I wanted dolls in it because fun fact about dolls in this movie is that they filmed dolls first and then filmed um, From Beyond, but they put out From Beyond first and then dolls. They because they filmed them on the same set with that house. Oh, no way. How, how, did, how the hell did I not know that? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I, I don't know. I really like Stuart Gordon. I got into Stuart Gordon when he passed away a few years ago. I just watched all his movies and I kind of, mm -hmm. you know, I appreciate them. They're usually they're like low budget horror movies. And some of them, I think he did a movie, something with robots. I cannot remember the name off the top of my head, but it was like Rock'em Sock'em Robots, but in real life. <laughs> oh, really? Was, yeah. Oh, my God. It was cheesy, man. Not like, you know, Pacific Rim or anything like that. Like, yeah, Pacific Rim costs 30 bucks to make. Um. Yeah, uh, what the, what the hell movie is? Um, I, I don't know. I'm I'm I don't want to take up too much time. I'm trying to see the dang um, filmography, uh, but I, I can't of Stuart right Gordon. Now. Yeah, the, the the film that the hell the film that you're talking about. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Uh, wow. So that that is um, a very good pick. Um, okay, well then, since we had the same movie, two robot movies, jocks, five, robot jocks, <laughs> which is also in the Empire uh, of Screams uh, box set. 
Oh man, so yeah. Um, so you've seen it or you at least have it or own it yet. <laughs> yeah, I um I'm be honest with you, I, I have not yet seen that movie. I didn't I didn't see all of the of the movies yet. I think because that one is like one of the last ones in the because there was five of them in that box set, and I just I just haven't seen it yet. So my bad guys. It's great um, yeah, it, it is. I bought the standard um and then I said screw it. I'm going to get the limited edition, you know, uh, hashtag double dip life. Mm. Uh, and so I, no regrets, man. That is just a gorgeous limited edition box set. Oh my gosh. So good. Um, so this is number four then, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, we already had this one. So I, you know what? I'm, I'm glad that I had an extra one out here. <laughs> <laughs> well, now uh, I have another one to talk about too, since you know we both double up. Who knew? You know, we each pick rip five random ones, so we'd have two of the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I, I figured we were may probably going to have one, uh, but not two. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, this is um, one of my favorite top three zombie films. It's just a dumb. It's <laughs> so it's so bad, but um, I I love it a lot. It's pretty ridiculous, and that's <laughs> burial ground. Uh, this this movie is just so bad, so <laughs> bad, but it's so good. There's some very memorable scenes in it where it's just kind of over the top. There's a kid who is isn't really a kid. <laughs> uh, there's just some weird weird scenes, and the the practical effects in this are fantastic they're so good um highly recommend this movie uh, as i said um i know this movie is really bad uh but it is it is um top three and i, I want to say it's an italian uh film as well uh but oh my goodness i simply love this movie and it has a fantastic ending as well um, at least I, I really like the ending. Um, yeah, it's yeah, such a good movie, man. Burial Underground or Burial Ground. This is released uh, from 88 Films, uh, which is a UK um, uh, distributor uh, label. Uh, and Seven Films actually just released Burial Ground last month, I want to say. Um, but I prefer uh, this one, even though I, I'm beginning to really like seven films and they're really fucked up films uh, because there's no other better way, a description to just, you know, describe seven films. They're just messed up films. Um, but I, I really love this release from 88 films. So um, j I just highly recommend it. It's a thick, super thick case. Um, yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. I knew I knew it was yeah, Italian. Uh, uh, zombie film. So, oh my goodness, love it. That's what that's what I still have to check out because you know what? Maybe I'll grab that version. And speaking of eighty eight films, you know they are a great like UK studio. I uh, they I want to grab from them. They just released the Witch Mas the Wish Mas the Witch Master General. I always get tongue twisted on that. <laughs> I want yes. to grab that. Someone in my comments section mentioned that movie, and I've never seen it. Um, but you know, you just now mentioned it, and and uh, one of my subscribers mentioned it as well so i i definitely have to check that movie out what's the like that film it's a horror western but it's uh what's his name i would say it's one of his better films i, I don't know why i'm drawing a blank you know there's christopher lee then him why i don't what's his name big horror guy give me a second i have to find it now because uh the fact i can't remember is bad the witch Sorry, master guys. general <laughs> oh witch master general the oh it is witch the Matt Esther General and where is the yep Vincent Price was the name I couldn't pull like <laughs> Vincent Price isn't it yes and it's like one of his more like super serious roles like to the point where this director I think this is the last film he directed he died young like in his early 30s but he got the best performance out of Vincent Price and Vincent Price hated him until he saw the movie because he would push him and like to get the best performance out of him. And Vincent Price hated that he was doing that, but then he saw the movie and he appreciated it. But yeah, it was, it's like a, a horror Western where this guy's pretty much, he's a fraud, but um, man, it's great. You have to see what? it. I, yeah. I recommend I'm... the movie for sure. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, which master general? Yeah, I get tongue okay. twisted on that. So. Okay. <laughs> I'll I'll definitely check that out then. Holy cow. Okay. Uh, what's your what's your um, number four? So yeah, so I mean it's technically my five because but since we've doubled up, I have one more I'll talk about after. But okay. I got I got the blob, the Scream Factory release. Had to talk about this one. A, I think it's a fantastic transfer. But this is a movie that I remember seeing as a kid and then just completely forgetting about it. Grab this because I remember like, why haven't I seen that in a while? Rewatched it last year when it came out. And man, I really just enjoy this movie. You know, it's a stupid, cheesy 80s movie, like kind of like a, in the same vein, I would say, as like Killer Clowns from Outer Space, but maybe a little bit better acting. But, you know, the effects themselves are a little bit better done. But man, on 4K oh. Blu-ray, beautiful. Gorgeous, man. Oh, I, I actually debated about putting that one on here as well, because, guys, just like from beyond, like the colors in that movie are just spectacular. Scream Factory did a wonderful job on the 4K, and that movie just had simply amazing practical effects, uh, and uh, it's just a fun-ass film, man. There's, there's some great gore scenes, like in the hospital. Um, holy cow. I That's a must-watch, and for me, a must-own for horror fans, um, especially in the 4K format. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, com I completely agree with you, man. Um, and then I guess if we want to do some honorable mentions, or you have one more you wanted to talk about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just super quick. Uh, the other one is uh, Video Drum. Oh, love Video Drum, and I see that you have the Arrow UK release. I have the Criterion 4K release. Yeah, because uh, this was the one that came out first. Uh, yeah, I, I want to say like a year later, uh, maybe uh, Criterion put put their version out, but. Uh, you know, it's an Arrow video, so it's got a book. It's all fancy, limited edition poster stuff. And and uh, this film just looked amazing. Uh, great 4K transfer. But this movie is just, holy cow. I forgot just how, how just how weird this movie is. And um, yeah, James James Woods is, is so good in this film. Holy cow. And just the way that his, the story arc for his character and just the the craziness that is a David Cronenberg film. This to me is like top three, top five, with easily top five, but like this is one of my favorite films, uh, 80s films, and of course, one of my favorite David uh, Cronenberg films. It's, guys, amazing. Must watch, must own. Video drop. Uh yeah, that's a great one. And I, I'm jealous because I think the Arrow video release has the better box art. And then, of course, they put it in their special case with the book. I, I think visually and audio wise, I'm pretty sure they're the same transfer. But the Arrow video release definitely gave us more of the bells and whistles. And it came out first. And I agree, man. That movie, long live the new flesh. Um, right? Oh, my God. Dude. <laughs> so good. I love it. Yeah. And yeah, his body horror stuff. The fact that he's still doing it, man. He's got a. He's got a weird mind and he passed that gene along to his son. I, I just don't, I can't mm -hmm. envision that stuff in my head. Like I just can't. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can't e either. And I watched a lot of messed up uh, horror films and, but like, yeah, it takes a lot. It takes in some ways like a, a sick genius uh, to come up, uh, you know, just imagine those, that type of uh, dark uh, and, but yet creative um, side. Um, and so I, yeah, definitely commend, uh, uh, and yeah, those, those people, cause they're, you know, David Cronenberg, obviously he's, he's iconic. He's up there with, uh, John Carpenter as one of the best horror uh, directors uh, out there. And so, and it's just so creative too. I mean, I mean, gosh, darn man, scan, so good. The fly scanners. I mean, you could like, just go on. And ringers, man. I love ringers that and uh, the dead zone. Like yeah, and then the guy decides that when he wants, he wants to tone it back a little bit, and he makes like um, a history of violence and Eastern promises, which like tone back the body hard. It's like, oh, he could just direct a great movie. <laughs> so good. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he does. I I still don't think he gets talked about uh, enough. And he's a good actor because uh, he's in one of my films. I almost put this on the list, uh, but it's a 1990 film. I know what you're gonna say. Yeah. Uh, 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 Night. Um, 
Nightbreed. Nightbreed, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, he is he is scary in that film. That's one of the films that I remember as a kid, um, without a doubt. Just so many the creature design, um, you know, it's just uh, Clive uh, Barker, uh, crazy crazy designs, and I I just I just love it. There's one thing in that movie that always kind of bothers me is that one of those creature designs. Do you remember Midnight Mac? Yeah, the the moon, the half the moon. moon. Yep, yeah. Yep. One of the characters in right. Nightbreed looks like that Chris half moon. moon right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he, he looks exactly like it. Yeah, yep. He's just missing the sunglasses. So that's one thing that always sticks out. But that movie and that is a great 4K transfer too. I just think of uh, David Cronenberg and that mask in the field i'm like oh that is a gorgeous looking image my god mm -hmm. uh but to add to the list of another honorable mention that uh is uh i think psycho two and three in that new psycho 4k box set that came out last so year so good oh it's up there yeah 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 mine's uh, over I, there great yeah. transfers man oh my gosh that franchise as a whole uh i it doesn't get talked about like how great it is i think that's one of the best of any horror franchise yeah, psycho like good people good right with us the problem with the psycho sequels is that just they have to live in the shadow of psycho and i don't i, I think and i was one of these people i was guilty of this completely writing them off as being nothing but direct-to-video sequels to a classic film but no if you haven't seen this at least psycho two and three i promise you you won't be disappointed by them yeah and i don't even care man the fourth film is i think it's still kind of good too it's a great um, 4K, is what it is, at least. The best in the entire Yeah, style. my yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, gosh. So good. So, yeah, good good picks, man. Good picks. Yeah, that was... Uh, so, yeah, that was my five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, well, um, yeah, I, I, that, that was... I, I had five, or technically six. Uh, yeah, we, I did six so. also, but we doubled up on a few, which just should show you yeah. that, you know, we have good taste in movies, <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh one of the ones i really wanted to put uh i, I just did it uh city of the living dead uh it has um culture films that has my favorite slipcase um of all time on it and oh, wow. that movie is just fantastic it's part of the whole giallo like gates of hell i have all of them house by the cemetery um uh, uh, uh from beyond uh i just got i mean dude oh my god yeah, yeah. It, it's it's horror. Oh, it's so good. So anyway, uh, City of the Living Dead has also one of the most iconic kill scenes uh, of all time. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it, John, but it is I, awesome. <laughs> I have it, but I almost grabbed that 4K. And now that you've told me that that 4K is that good, I'm going to get that now. I'll add that to the list of long with all the other ones you told me in this video that I need to grab. So I appreciate all those recommendations. Um, one that I forgot to put on this list that, you know, wouldn't have made the top five, but a good honorable mention. Another Vinegar Syndrome is I really like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, too. Yes. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we talked about it before, but just Dennis Hopper. Holy yeah. Shit, man. He is just one of the best actors of all time. He he is when he again, just he's a dedicated actor. Let's just say that. <laughs> and, and he is the best part of of uh number two and yeah so oh, yeah. good yeah that's a good that's a good pick as well and before we end this vi this week's episode or this month's episode of collector's coin i have to ask you a question because i was i wanted to grab this and i watched this movie the other night for the first time and i'm wondering if you have this on steelbook or not and that's the limey by chance, do you have that 4K steelbook? No, I don't have that because that's a Lionsgate uh, steelbook. Um, yeah, no, and it's I, out of I print don't. right now, and I went to go look for it, and it's like eighty bucks on eBay. <laughs> oh, really? No, I, I haven't. Uh, nope, that's one of the the, the few that I'm missing. Uh, so I, I need a I need to get that, but yeah, I, that that can wait for a long time. <laughs> yeah, after... yeah, eighty bucks. That's crazy. That is crazy. And I watched the movie and the movie's good, but it's not one of Steven Soderbergh's best movies, but it's still, mm -hmm. it, it's a good revenge movie. And I was like, ah, you know, I liked it enough. I was like, I remember that having a steel book. Let me go see if I can grab that. And I was like, oh, 80 bucks on eBay out of print. Well, all right. <laughs> we'll wait some time for that. <laughs> yeah, no, no kidding, man. I, I just, I, uh, I, right before this, I just uh, uh, messaged you. I was finally able to get some, uh, 4k steel books um that i wanted for a very long time so 
um, you know, I'm sure after this video, uh, I would have, you know, released the video by now, but, um, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know when you plan on releasing this, uh, but yeah, cause I, I just, um, I'm, I'm getting, um, yeah, the, the fifth element and, uh, sleepy hollow. I'm friendly. I, I finally was able to get, um, uh, was it, uh, the running man, last uh, action hero. Know. And freaking Amazon, like my orders are finally now getting to me. Like the departed, I, I'm getting like pretty late. Um, so how'd you do with oceans? I my oceans trilogy got delayed on the day. I, I, I actually didn't pick it. I didn't, I didn't get that. So uh, yeah. I, did you get the steel books? No, I got the regular one because it was fifty four bucks, and I figured. You see, the problem is, is I only like Ocean's Eleven, but to be fair, I haven't seen 12 and 13 in a very long time. So I was like, okay, good time to revisit them. I pre-ordered them the day you could pre-order them on Amazon. And then the morning of, it's like, oh, arriving before 11 p.m. tonight. Then I get an email. Uh, there's a bit of delay, and it's going to we'll send you a new release date. Now they're saying it's coming this Tuesday. But I'm like, man, the day of, you tell me. <laughs> nah, that sucks, man. Yeah, I already yeah. told you that, uh, again, I've had very good luck with walmart man uh, i think i'm gonna get the crow a little early because that's being shipped out uh today um so should have it yeah. maybe by saturday and have like at least you can yeah i got and i got the standard release from amazon so that probably will be here tuesday okay yeah I, i'm an idiot and so i i got like um the walmart 4k steelbook and the, and the um uh, uh so there's walmart and there there's is another exclusive a one uh amazon is it amazon no maybe what's maybe. the other one there's, there's another exclusive yeah there are... exclusives i know or no walmart is the exclusive one the and then there's like the other 4k steelbook that you can get on amazon and uh target um so yeah so there's two different versions of of uh, the crow so yeah which is awesome so I'm, I'm hearing good things right out of the gate from people who've seen it. So, you know, we'll see when we get it for ourselves and get our own eyes on it. But that's what I'm really excited to finally see. Yeah, I yeah, I, I've seen people's reviews and it's been uh, nothing but great, great stuff uh, from uh, reviewers. And that's that's good because it's from Paramount. And uh, and yeah, I mean, that's it's a pretty iconic movie in some ways. Uh, the Crow, I, I, I grew up um i think i saw it when i was in in middle school i think maybe like a, a year or two years after when it was initially released um and so i yeah i really like the film um it, it has been a long time since i've seen it but i just remember really liking it um so oh that's it's a... just really sad about you know uh, of course oh, uh, yeah. brandon lee and all that stuff so and i can understand people why they they um maybe don't want to see it or you know just because of that but it, it's just a fantastic movie and he does a, a wonderful job uh, as an actor um in that film and it, yeah it, yeah it just sucks that you know obviously he passed away just way too young and it's just a tragic accident uh during the film but it's just phenomenal horrible. Yeah. Oh, he's great and it's just horrible for her. like i feel bad for his mother and you know bruce lee's wife like you know he dies so young and tragic and then to go through it all over again with your son i mean it, it's such like avoidable things in almost both cases and it's just it's sad it's just really sad and yeah it does take away when you watch it but in a sense only because you know you're watching brandon lee and you're like this guy could have done so much more because he's still so young and it, that's always what's you know it's like miss it's like when you watch heath ledger in the dark knight it's like what else could we have gotten yeah i mean that is just a phenomenal role. Uh, yeah, Heath Ledger in, in The Dark Knight. Yeah, that's uh, very memorable, man. Um, so, yeah, very and very uh, powerful roles, uh, I think, uh, especially Heath Ledger. Um, just crazy because he was always in those like uh, romantic films. And at least that's how I saw him when I was yeah, younger. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and, and for him to have a, a, a role like that. Uh, and his performance holy cow yeah no nah, it's incredible it, it was a, it's just again it's just sad when actors pass away at such a young age and you know they leave this legacy behind but you know it's always asking what if after that happens mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh yeah for sure but uh yeah 
Yeah, yeah sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you have any final thoughts on this week's show, or you ready to wrap it up? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I think uh, we, um, yeah, we we actually got to the dang topic, and we talked about it in in, in deep. Um, and so, yeah, man. Uh, no, I, I think um, it, it's it's. Uh, I think we're good, um, and I can't wait till next month. <laughs> Uh, me neither. So I want to thank all of you guys for being here with us on another episode of Collectors Honor. Collectors, I want to thank you guys all for being here on another episode of Collectors Corner with me, John from Let's Talk, and yeah, Frank uh, from Frank's Media and Reviews. Yeah, and we'll see you guys in a month. So you know, <laughs> subscribe to both of our channels, you know, and tell your friends about us because you know we're two great, good-looking guys. <laughs> <laughs> Wild stallions. <laughs> We're better looking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody. I hope you enjoyed me and Frank's latest video of Collector's Quarter. That is a monthly show that we will be doing here on the channel. But it's also Tuesday. That means it's time for the Digital Code Giveaway. In every single video that we do on Friday, I ask you guys two Digital Code Giveaway questions. All you have to do is answer one of those in the comment section below. As long as you do that, you come back to this video right here. We put your name on a magic wheel. We spin that wheel two times. The two names that lands on, they have their choice. The digital codes that you've seen on your screen before you today. And I asked you guys, what was your favorite Planet of the Apes movie? And what was your favorite sci-fi movie before the year 2000? And I would say Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and the original Planet of the Apes were the most popular choices, which is funny because those would be my one too. The original Planet of the Apes, not, the original Planet of the Apes from 1968, that is still my favorite. It's still a fantastic film. The makeup effects still hold up really well. And the ending is an all-time classic. But Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, the follow-up to Rise, the first one that was directed by Matthew Reeves, is a great movie. And it's really hard. And it comes really close to actually beating 1968's Planet of the Apes. But that one does still hold a special place in my heart. But Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is a great film. And obviously, best sci-fi film before the year 2000. Everybody had different answers. I think the only one that doubled up was The Empire Strikes Back, which makes a lot of sense. It's a fantastic Star Wars film. But anyway, I'll keep rambling on, so let's spin this wheel and see who our two lucky winners are. All right, congratulations, Cutie Pie and Rogue One Six Seven Seven. You guys have both won in the past, so you guys know what to do. Reach out to me at my email address, let's talk entmt at gmail.com. Let me know which of the digital codes you want. As long as the other winner didn't take it, that digital code is all yours. But if you don't feel comfortable emailing me, you could always reach out to me at Instagram, Facebook, the artist formerly known as Twitter. DM me there and also let me know which one of those digital codes you want. And again, as long as the other winner doesn't get it, it is also all yours yours but if you didn't win this week guys don't worry about it we do this every single week make sure you come back to this friday's video which will be a review for either once upon a time in the west or dune 2 on 4k blu-ray so keep your eyes out for that and we will do this all over again and that's going to do it here for us on another episode of let's talk or in this case collector's corner and we really hope you guys enjoyed this week's show and if you did make sure you guys let us know in the comment section what you thought about it what you liked what you didn't like and if you can like this video subscribe to the channel turn notifications on that really does help the algorithm to keep pushing the channel and we also have channel memberships. We have a Friends of the Channel tier. We have a Producers tier. We have a Director's tier where you'll find Frank from Frank's Medium Reviews under the Director tier. And under the Producers tier, that's where you're going to find Jason Martin, Mr. Smelly Potato, and John Doe Juggalo. John Doe Juggalo and Frank from Frank's Medium Reviews, they have YouTube channels as well. 
they would really appreciate it. And so would I if you go over there, subscribe to them, help them out. They are great guys and they definitely love physical media. So they're the kind of guys you definitely should be subscribing to. And I promise you, you will not regret it. But anyway, if you got no money to throw away, don't worry about it. We just hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to get out in those streets, tell your friends about us, and then we'll be seeing you around. <laughs>